Join the coven. I Hunt Reverse Vampires A story written by Cecily, 1987 Part 8 The Thule? I had no idea what that was at the time. Whatever it was, it was close enough to scare Alejandro. I looked at Mika and she was as confused as I was. But Voss looked absolutely pale. His face was one of fear. Alejandro quickly regained his composure and stepped forward toward the kid. My apologies, senor. I should have known from the aura of arrogance wafting off your Aryan features, Alejandro conveyed with a helping hand of sarcasm. Oh, quiet fool, the kid spat. I hated the moral grandstanding of the Reich just as much as your precious Ahmet. It was at this moment I detected the faintest hint of a German accent. It all finally clicked. He's a Nazi, I bursted out. Nazis were always the bad guys. I should have caught it sooner. Just couldn't get rid of them. There was a suspended silence as Alejandro, the kid, and all the ninjas and the rest just turned to look at me. I decided I should probably keep my thoughts to myself for the time being. Reformed Nazi, the kid said to me. You can't blame me for the brainwashing they did to me when I was young. It doesn't matter. Lasselina, I'll make a deal with you, Alejandro said, addressing the woman. I kill your fighter and you let us leave. You know this world is too small for us not to cross paths again eventually. You take your chump change bounty and we establish your rule in the area. We leave having completed our mission and no war between clans. Lasselina laughed. <laughs> you overestimate your prowess and importance to our, your clan. I don't think Ahmet will go to war with Toltec Group for killing one Sicario during an off-the-grid wet work mission. But, she tilted her head, as much as I despise cattle, it shouldn't be their fault you got them killed. She let out a melodious laugh. Ahmet may have issue with me killing off their pets. I agree to your demands, the boy interrupted. La Salina looked at him furiously, but held her tongue. If you beat me, you and the cattle live. Er Drezon, this is idiotic, La Salina said, waving her hands in a sweeping gesture at everything around us. We did all this for... Shut your mouth, you woman, the brat screamed back, his red oar flicking about him in anger. Or should I tell your master about this disrespect? La Salina cleared her throat and looked down at the ground, avoiding his stare. The red flames burning on him seemed to die down before he turned back to Alejandro. Order them not to interfere, Herr Drezin commanded Alejandro, pointing to the three of us. No, Mika shouted. Put four on four. We will kill your best fighters and let the rest of you off with a warning. I saw Mika already had a razor wire wrapped around her robotic hand. The rest ran back into a spool on her belt. Mika, stop, Voss interjected. Have faith in our teacher, he begged. We won't interfere, Voss spoke like he knew Alejandro would win. But I suspected something else. Voss was afraid. Then, let's begin, the boy said as he pulled two small scalpels out to carry in both hands. He pushed a button on them and they began to glow a hot red. They are self-heating and cause burning damage. This makes them a good melee weapon against other mobs. It also allows me to get in close and experience every little detail on my patient's face. Do you want one? Alejandro swiftly pulled both machetes from behind his back. He too pushed a button and a low hum began to emit from them. He touched both together and they sparked like live jumper cables. I have my favorites too, Alejandro said back. I tell you, Conrad began from his position on his knees beside Lana Lisa. 
behind her, Drezine. I still hate you, Alejandro, but I kind of want to see a fellow brother from Nouveau Lorado teach this uppity gringo. Alejandro ignored Conrad and rushed in towards Herr Drezine. The boy deftly leaned back and forth out of the path of Alejandro's blades. He almost made it look easy, like Muhammad Ali doing the rope-a-dope in his prime. We all expanded outwards a couple of steps to give the dueling pair more room. Alejandro seemed to be getting frustrated with his nimble foe. He still hadn't landed a blow as he aggressively forced the tiny Nazi into a backward circle. Angry, Alejandro kicked a handful of dirt up into Drezine's eyes. Drezine froze long enough for Alejandro to get very close to decapitating him. Drezine had to throw up a scalpel to block the swinging machete. Sparks flew and Drezine screamed as electricity arched through his body when making contact with his heated scalpel. Alejandro's other machete came across in an arch to slice off the hand Drezine was using to block the first machete. Drezine screamed and stumbled back as his left hand tumbled to the dirt still holding the glowing scalpel. Alejandro took advantage of the boy's confusion and swung both machetes downwards in an overhand arch, meaning to dismember both arms off the boy's body. Drezine intercepted and sliced like lightning towards Alejandro's fingers on his left hand as he swung downwards. The fingers flew off and the machete just bounced off Drezine's shoulder, doing minimal damage. The other machete strike cut deep into Drezine's collarbone. Once again, the electricity popped through the boy's body, but he was not phased this time. This time, Drezine stabbed and sliced Alejandro, as Alejandro's remaining weapon was still stuck in Drezine's collarbone. Alejandro was forced to release his remaining weapon to retreat from the fury of blows as he was receiving from the scalpel. When he stepped back, I saw his gut was burnt meat. He had a slice across his face that popped a right eye and left glowing embers. I could smell burning flesh, and for the first time, I feared for Alejandro's life. Drezine yanked the machete out of his shoulder and tossed it aside. He began to slow stalk towards the weaponless Alejandro. Already Drezine's left hand and shoulder were completely healed. I'm already better, Pops, Drezine said as he rotated his shoulder. Sure, you don't want to trade up for one of my weapons? Alejandro wasn't healing because of the burn damage, and his first machete was located behind Drezine. Drezine saw him eyeing it and stepped in its path to block it from Alejandro. But Alejandro had to get it, so he charged forward. With a combo of kicks and punches, Alejandro tried to knock Drezine off balance. Drezine kept jabbing and slicing Alejandro between dodges, streaming blood spattered to the ground. Alejandro's forward momentum carried him when his body gave out. He stumbled forward to crash in the dirt, face first, in front of the machete he was after. Drezine just sidestepped him and let him fall. Not what you anticipated, was it? Drezine gloated as he walked away from Alejandro's body to turn on his heel to face him again. Alejandro and Drezine had switched places. Now Drezine was closest to us with his back turned, while Alejandro was further facing us. Mistress La Salina and Conrad behind him, the wolfman Lobo stood off to the side while his ninja completed the circle. We were all quiet. I could hear Alejandro grunting as he struggled to stand up, using his machete for balance. I saw Alejandro looking at us as we were worried for him. I could see that he made eye contact with Mika on the other side of Voss. I saw him mouth something to Mika. She later told me she could read lips, and he had charmed her. He had told her, pop dark out grenade. Now, the next hundred things all happened at once, so try to keep up. After three seconds, Mika's dark grenade went off and swallowed Mika and Voss in a silent darkness. La Salina saw these from across the way and screamed 
and pointed at Mika, thinking it was escape attempt. All the ninjas and lobos turned to their attention to us. At the same time, Drazen was not so easily distracted. He rushed after Alejandro, and Alejandro rushed after him. Alejandro's blade raised above his head. At the last second before the two warriors clashed, Alejandro didn't press the attack. He swung too early to swipe down harmlessly in front of the oncoming Drazen. Alejandro pivoted on his lead foot to turn to the opposite direction, towards Conrad and La Salina. Alejandro's missed downward swing turned into the momentum of an upward strike. I saw Conrad's and La Salina's eyes bulge as Alejandro came close. I saw a flash of movement as Lobo launched to protect his mistress. I saw Drazen pursuing right on Alejandro's heels, about to strike. All within the same split second, three strikes landed on right after the other. The first strike was Alejandro slicing off the kneeling Conrad's head, the machete cleaving most of Conrad's face off in an upward angle. Alejandro pivoted the upward momentum of the strike to swing back down and swipe back down on behind himself an attempt to hit Drazine with the same attack he had just killed Conrad with, but Drazine was too fast and too close for Alejandro to complete the attack. The second strike was Drazine slamming into Alejandro while his machete was low, stabbing Alejandro deep in the gut, making him crumple inwards. The third was Lobo, coming in with a giant battle axe to chop off Alejandro's head from the side. Alejandro never had a chance to defend against these attacks. He made a gamble on a flashy maneuver and failed. But I saw the look of peace on Alejandro's face as it fell to roll beside Conrad's, his visage of terror. I guess if Alejandro wasn't making it back, he would make sure Conrad wasn't making it either. Then everything popped off. I'll be back soon with the next update. I've got the answers to a lot of questions.